This is modern homesteading. Here we see the traditional map pocket pocket on the back. This one has snaps instead of the buttons like granddad's there. But I think, you know, going back to talking about the cold shoulder, getting a cold shoulder, one thing that's so warm about this jacket is you have two full layers of wool on your back. So you're not going to get the cold shoulder. Your granddad was always worried about. It's like having two blankets thrown over your shoulder and with that double wool on there. And it's uh it's fabulous. Likes and um, likes on this jacket are it's just such a basic design. It's just so simple. What I have found is I'm so used to being cold and, and layering that I've had to curtail the way I dress uh, because I don't need all the layers under this. I can have just a light shirt and a t-shirt under this, throw this on, and this is good. You know, 20, 30 degrees, no problem. And what I like about that is it gives me mobility and flexibility. I'm not, I'm not at all res restricted in moving around. The coat is very boxy, you know, so it's very big. It's not a tailored fit, so it gives you lots of room to move. And it's just, it just holds the warmth in. And I just, just absolutely love it. Pockets, four pockets on the front, pen pockets here, which are really nice. I actually use these, put Sharpies or different things in. There's one inside pocket right here. Extra button in case you need it. One thing I noticed that was kind of, kind of nice, you can see a reinforcement behind all of the snaps, double stitched. Just such a basic, classic coat. No frills, no, no, nothing that's unnecessary. Some of the earlier coats were lined, which, which is nice. Like Granddad's here is lined with, with a cotton, and it has cuffs. It's even got storm flaps on there, and it's got warmer pockets that are lined. You can see all lined on the inside, which is, is nice because if you're wearing a wool sweater when you throw this on, being it's not lined, it kind of drags. You know, that lining kind of acts like a like a bearing. You know, as you move and twist, if you wear something that's unlined, it will catch and creates a little bit more drag and friction, and it can be a little bit more tiresome when you're working. I mean, it's, it's not a big deal, but it's something to consider. So the material that you wear underneath the wool, if you're really active, if you're swinging an axe or chopping or doing something where you're really moving a lot, you want to make sure you your undergarment is something that slides well across the wool. Wool on wool sticks, so I don't know, maybe maybe it matters to you, maybe not. One downside on this it, is that if you it's really windy and it's if if you're really in a cold environment, the collar is not super stiff and you do get a little bit cold around your neck. There's not a what I would call a sufficient storm flap on it. This You would probably want to wear it with a muffler or a scarf or some sort or a turtleneck type of sweater or something that goes up on your neck. I do notice that but it hasn't been a super issue but it doesn't get you know it doesn't get super cold here. But I love the jacket. It is uh, just a treasure to me. It's an heirloom something that will last forever. Um, it's worth the investment. I mean, when I just look at granddad's, my granddad did not, was not an extravagant man, and he rarely bought things. Uh, he always kind of made do with what he had. But when he bought something, he bought quality. Whether it was his tools or his clothing, uh, optics, hunting equipment, everything he bought, he would buy the best. And, and just when I was, I just noticed that when I was going through his things when he passed away and some of his things came back to me, that all of them had been purchased from you know, 1940, 1950, 1960, and they were still just treasures. They were treasures because he purchased quality and they were still had value and still had use, where so much of the things that we buy today are a year or two and, and they're gone. And we think, oh, you know, it, it's foolish to spend $350, $400 on a jacket like this uh, because I can go to Walmart and I can buy one for $45. But, you know, you got to look at the long term, you know, think about that. Just like what we talk about with the boots. You know, how, how many of those jackets do you buy? And, and what does it really cost in the long term? Uh, of, and just throwing things away when you could stop, save a little bit of money and buy something like this that is something that your grandkids will wear. You know, it's 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 true. Here we are. My wife will wear this, and not only that, 
my son will be able to wear this when he gets a little bit bigger. So that's four generations, one coat. And the Filson coats that are being made today and the Filson products, these wool products like this and this vest are, are no less quality. They're the same, uh, if not better. So I thought I'd share that with you. And if you are sitting on the fence about getting one of these jackets, you can tell your wife that you have my permission to get one. So everything will be okay. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you next time. There you go. You've got my permission. Just when you uh, got finished saving up for those $500 boots, uh, now you've got a $400 jacket to buy. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, uh, you're investing in the future. Um, I remember uh, hunting with my grandfather. I was just little. I think this was before I could carry a gun. And we were, used to be skiers. And you know how ski clothing are. You used to have that nylon, you know, like bibs. And whenever you walk, you know, they make a lot of noise. Oh, I, 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 I think I got sent out with him with a pair of those bibs. And I've, you know, followed him around and walked him around with those bibs making noise and dragging all the brush and rubbing against each other. <laughs> he was so gracious and and patient about that, but um, I think it was made very clear that those were not to be the worn uh, the following year. So, <laughs> just a funny a funny story. So uh, today uh, we are uh, packing up. I worked all day yesterday to get the adventure van ready for an adventure. Um, did a bunch of modifications on it. Um, maybe I could share that with you. Let me know if you're interested in that in the comments. Uh, also, I need a safe way to carry Wanda and Henrietta, my two prize crosscut saws for the long journey. A way to carry them, I've got, a, I've got an idea, I know what I'm going to do, and uh, so make some cases for them um, uh, for our journey. So also, I guess I could do a video on that. Let me know if you're interested. If I get enough interest in that, in the comments, um, I'd be happy to share that with you. So that's it. Oh, don't forget, click the thumbs up if you like these videos, if you'd like to see some product videos or, Reviews. I'm not going to be. I'm not a gear reviewer. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, but I will share products with you that um, that I have used and use and, and enjoy, and that I think are special. So if you like those, um, you can support the channel that way. So thanks for watching, and we'll I do have something else exciting for you. I'm going to save that. We'll see you next time.